Hello, everybody. As mentioned last week, I had a big surprise for you. And one of them was Andy from another channel. And today I have one of my idols in trading. It's Borak from Trading, uh, trading Channels. Uh, he has said yes to come onto the show and do a quick take on a few things that we have planned. We will look into gold, silver, uranium, and uh, and a few other things. Um, so yeah, as mentioned, Borak was one of the first people I followed on Twitter and also one of the guys who has learned me the most with regarding to trend lines and so on. So I'm really pleased to have you on, Borak. It's, uh, personally, I'm very excited. And, uh, Pleasure, and, to, pleasure yeah. to meet you. Yeah, yeah. Me, you too, you too. <laughs> and uh, yeah, please give uh, the audience a quick uh, take. Where do you come from? What what do you do? And, and so on. Yeah, I'm uh, Borak from Trading Channels. Um, been trading. I've been trading since 2009. Um, and um, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not uh, a part of the financial industry. Um, actually, an engineer, aerospace engineer. Ah, me too. Uh, and then, um, oh, you too? Yeah, I mean, not, not aerospace, but an engineer. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, then I got into trading. It's a long story. I won't, I won't go into that. And then uh, went through a few, a few uh, books, not a few books, quite a lot of books, actually, more than, more than I've, I've studied during my engineering studies. <laughs> I, I didn't find much use on, in the books. Uh, then I, I started going through some blogs. Um, I went through quite a few methods, um, one being Elliott Wave and quite a lot of like indicators, moving averages, whatever. Everybody has gone through those. And then finally I said, okay, this um, this is not working out. So um, I think by 2011, I had already yeah, gone through two accounts. So I blew up two accounts. Um, then I said, okay, this is um, it's not sustainable. So I, I have to find something more visual like because i'm a visual person i like the aesthetics of things mostly in life and in trading and it just gives a uh, better control and risk so but uh, yeah I've, I've been through quite a lot of um methods even on the visual side like a lot of um again going through like experimented with a, a lot of lines and then finally came up with some kind of a i, I can say it's a proprietary uh, method um, because everybody draws a lot of lines, channels, whatever, but um, I find it very comfortable what, what I have, what I've been doing. It gives me a very good um, risk control. Mm -hmm. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, if my lines don't work, then I basically ditch them and try to find as long as, um, until it shows me, I mean, a, a certain market at least, until it's that certain market shows me something, um, then yeah, I, I wait until it shows something. I, I don't really go through like what a certain market is going to do in the next three, five months. That's not what I do. I basically look into setups, uh, a short setup, a long setup based on double support, triple support, if I can find the triple support based on different formations, if I can capture a triple support, then I buy. And then, or if it's a breakout, yeah, that sort of thing. And vice versa for the shorts, obviously. Yeah, a triple resistance would be a short, a double resistance would be okay. So it's amazing. It's basically a lot of um, channel, um, a lot of line plotting. Not at, not at the moment, not anymore, because I kind of like have an eye for it that I when when uh, I see some price action, I can already see that yeah. there is a, <laughs> there is a there is a channel or there is a resistance. I just highlight it. Um, it's kind of like the eye, like over the next what over the past ten years or so. So you basically yeah, you know get get an eye for it. Um, um and trading channels i mean it, it started with a free a free blogging uh, it's still there actually on blogspot uh, blogspot trading um from 2013 so i was doing it basically for three years all all free i uh, just loved it and sharing my ideas and then finally it became a model uh kind of a business model because a lot of people were asking me if you can, if i can teach it which i do um, I I do one-on-one -on -one mentoring as well for to to teach the method, 
but also like I started making some calls and they kind of like got traction. And then since 2015, I am on trading channels at UK. So it's um, uh, almost eight years now. Yeah, it's been a journey. Yeah, very, yeah. very, <laughs> very, very nice journey. I, yeah, I've met through a lot. You know, I met a lot of people. I love the industry. I love the puzzle that is changing every day. So yeah. it just just gets gets me going, and uh, you know, makes me wake up every morning. I like it. Yeah, that's nice to have. Uh, what you do for a living is is what you're passionate uh, passionate about. That's that's, right. uh, that's number one. So yeah, and yeah. like I I quit engineering after a while. <laughs> it's yeah. Just uh, this this was a a, a much uh, ex, much more exciting venue, and I was. Uh, much better in trading than I was ever uh, in engineering. There is that. Yeah, I can. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, as mentioned, Burak was one of the first that I followed, and uh, 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 and he has learned me a lot. So please, you have to follow this guy on Twitter, and if you want to get a part of his uh, his uh, his website, you can see it here. It's Trading Channels uh, UK. Uh, mm -hmm. Go and have a look. See if it, if it's something for you. If not, then it is what it is. But if it is, uh, reach out to Burak and he will help you to get uh, get things going for sure. There is a, there is a free trial. Everybody is okay. you know welcome to try it. Yeah, I highly recommend it uh, uh, to do it for sure. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay, okay. Burak. Thank you for the uh, so, for your uh, intro. And uh, I think the viewers are very uh, eager to to get things going. So show uh, show us what you have. We have okay. talked a bit uh, before this interview what we want to talk about, so we have a have a small schedule, whatever. But but I can stop sharing now, and then you can you can do what you do best, which is. Um... So I'm going to share my screen. Yes, I think I need to uh, uh, to allow it to. Yeah, yeah. You, you can do it now. I think so. Yeah. So I'm going to let's share let's share the. Um... Desktop, I think that's the best. It's a little bit, um, it's going to be quite big, I guess. Um, but I think we can do, yeah, I can share the whole screen. I hope it's not a, it's not a very bad one. No, for me, it's fine. It looks, uh, it's, it's totally okay. fine here. Yeah, it's, right. it's, it's perfect. So I'm going to talk about, as, as we, as we discussed, uh, I'm going to talk about gold, silver, platinum. And then add uranium. What I what I th think about uranium, um, the miners. I I'll throw in a few miners miners charts because um, that you know uranium has been my, one of my favorites for the last couple of years. I was quite early on that, but now uh, it's kind of paying off. But let's talk about first gold. Um, this is a uh, the chart from two thousand twenty, as you can see here. The, the the run up all the way to 2070 um, was a very critical resistance right there. And that's the third touch on that black top band. So this is obviously a kind of a bull flag formation. Okay. So at 2070, 2065, we hit a double resistance, which was the red. You can see that's what I say when I, when I was talking about the lines. It becomes much more probable for trading for a setup when it comes together as a double resistance or a double support. So um, this here was a was a double resistance, a very strong one. You can see here that this is February high, this is April high, and it touched it for the third time. Obviously, it is a third touch, so it could it what it had to reverse here for uh, to call it as a resistance. And it did, uh, but it, when it was also um, coinciding with that black one, this is a 2020 high, 2022 high, that was like the, th the, the third touch. So three third touch on black and red, and we saw the reversal so sharp. Then I said, okay, well, now, now it's getting a little bit dangerous. So I'm gonna switch to the four hourly chart all the way run up to the um to the 2065 2070 that black blue resistance um i was marking it back then i said if this blue resistance breaks we're going to run up all the way to that 2060 65 and then it came down for for a back test on that blue support but then eventually as you can see here that red red support rail and when we broke down 
2000, the level 2000 or 1995, it basically cleared that blue support and this blue support as well. You can see it was a kind of a triangle here and that blue support was broken. That's like a double support breaking to the downside, but more importantly also the red support rail, that internal support rail was also taken out. That's where I think, that's what I I, I um, started talk about, talking about more bearish scenario for gold. I'm not saying gold is bearish for the long term. Obviously, it's a huge bull flag on the black. But when it broke these supports, it turned out a little bit more, let's say, short to medium term bearish. So what we had was a kind of a back test on that blue support zone that is broken. So it became like a resistance zone. We never even touched that blue. This is the spot chart, by the way. Um, the, the futures chart is a little bit better. And it, I think the futures already tested these blue support zone and it came down. Um, afterwards, we had this golden resistance that was broken last week. So it rallied after that, but then it came down, well, basically since Friday. Um, it didn't touch. So as you can see, this level is quite a lot of horizontal support lines here. Um, I think what are from a channel per perspective, the red bottom band is a nice level to for a much stronger bounce. So if it comes to that red support zone together with the golden, I would wish that it, it comes and tests this level together. And I may even argue that we have another zone here. That's like a triple support. I can see here that blue one, that, that red one and the golden one. And the level for that is around 1921 on the spot chart. So we are at 1963 today. If it comes down quite sharply, I can even put a date on it, which is going to be 7th of June. Obviously, this is an ideal case. If it gets there and if we see a bounce, then only then it becomes a, a buy signal, not before that. So I'm not making any prophecies here. I'm not making like it's going to get there. But if it gets there, and if we see some sort of a bounce already starting, then I say, okay, I think we can buy that because that is a confirmed zone that is like triple support zone here. This is my trading style. I'm not really making like, oh yeah, gold is going to go in three months there or two months here. This is not what I do. I'm I'm basically looking into setups. So um, on the other hand, so on the bear, more bearish side, let's say if the red, this triple support holds, we have a really nice strong bounce, but then the red one breaks afterwards. What's going to happen then? There is a, a large uh, gap here, which is at 1865. I'm not saying again, I'm not saying it's going to get there, but if the red support first holds and then breaks it, this becomes a much more real target for my money. Uh, that's how I see it. And then after that, maybe after that gap fill, I will, of course, look into maybe like a bull flag here. We, we fill the gap and then break out of a bull flag. All these scenarios are if and when. So if it does this, I'm going to do that. If it does that, I'm going to do this. This is kind of, a again, my trading model. Um, I'm going to talk about silver now. Um Silver, obviously, so this is this was the COVID low, and we had a major push to break out of the golden resistance right there. That internal resistance, as you can see, quite a few touches on that golden resistance, and we shot up from there. It didn't even backtest that, that level. It rallied all the way, and it's touching, it touched this golden zone, I would say, it's still not out of the woods yet. This is this is a, a bull flag potential. Why I say potential? Because it only has one touch on the top band. Many people were calling, I would say, oh yeah, this now silver is going to go to the moon, 50, 60, 70 dollars. But um, until it breaks really this level, which is at, what, why is my uh, computer acting weirdly now? It's around 27.50. It didn't get there. I was hoping that it would get there. Okay, within that green uptrend, I was hoping that it would get there at 27.50 and then come down hard. 
to confirm that as a resistance. That's that was my kind of short position. Actually, I would love I would have loved to short that level, like green plus golden. That level at twenty seven fifty, come back down, and then a break to the upside. That golden bull flag. It's still again a speculative bull flag. It has to get to that golden top band, come back down, and then a break to the upside. First, it has to confirm this as a as a channel or as a downtrend. So either way, I mean, at the moment, I still believe silver is not really uh, out of the woods. I don't think silver's bull market re has really started. On the more short term, let's have a look at that green. This is, of course, looking like a bear flag um, because this is where it started, basically last quarter three, 2022. And it rallied, came down, and it rallied again to touch that green top band. So if it comes to that green bottom band, bounces maybe a, one more time, and then a break to the downside, that would turn even much, even more bearish for silver, in my view. I'm, I'm bearish on the short term, and I'm going to explain a little bit better, maybe on the futures chart. Um, there is also one more thing I want to add here. There is a gap here at 2050, just like gold has at 1865. Um, if it gets there, we'll see how it gets there. Is it going to get there within a bull flag, get there, fill the gap, and then rally? Everything is based on price action everything so i would really watch the price action how it gets there if it gets there and then it, whether that gap fill is going to happen and then we see a bounce to break out of a formation this is this would be my way of thinking if and when we get there um on the let's say on the spot chart um Oh, excuse me, not spot. This is the futures chart. It was a little bit better on this futures chart last week, last Friday. Um, I think uh, quite a few people, if you're following me, the red top band, I said that is that may cause a reversal. And and it did, actually. Uh, and I uh, we shorted it at 24, just below 24, 23.98. And it cleared this golden bear flag. And this morning, it was also clearing this blue support, but then the ISM numbers came in and we had a, a really uh, a spike to the upside. I still believe, not believe, but I still hope that it's not going to break out of the red downtrend. It's going to keep on holding and we're going to see more downside all the way to 22 level, right? That is the target of the short. I already closed half of the position, so... It's basically a risk-free trade. Um, this year, of course, was also a triple support. We can double support. So the green one, you can see that, and the red one, though. So they both held. And as long as the red that up, the red top band holds, I'm still expecting more downside. I think today, tonight, or tomorrow, we'll find out whether this spike is going to be is going to be turned out to be noise, the ISM numbers noise. And then whether it's going to come down or not. So we're going to find out very soon. Um, so this is my, yeah, silver, as you can see, that golden support zone. That was a horizontal support that was broken. That's why also when gold was bre breaking the supports at 2000, silver will, was breaking these. So they both happened to be at the same time, which was also kind of giving me a bit more confidence in the bearish call. Last one on the metals is platinum. So let's talk about a little bit more long-term first. This is the COVID crash. And it's basically, so the red downtrend, okay? The red downtrend from 2011 high, the top band, the top band was there. The bottom band wasn't there. So it came all the way here during the COVID crash and it bounced really hard. Obviously there was small damage there. It was very volatile back then, but it rallied back to the red top band. And finally it broke it to the upside. And we had a, a, back, a back test here on that red, came all the way to $1,350, came back down for another back test and another back test and more back tests. So that red, 
channel that was broken was back tested one, two, three, four, five, six, six times or so. And then finally it rallied and we have this red top band. So the red channel is broken, but it's actually a, like a double decker channel, which is the second part right there is a giant bull flag formation. And the two touches there and a few touches on the bottom band, anything to break out of this red top band, which is around 1,100 at the moment, then it would look extremely bullish. And I still believe eventually that red resistance, that 1,100 is going to be breaking broken. But do we have a bit more downside before it does that? Clearly, the black one it may turn into a bear flag. Okay, so it's not a bear flag yet, but two touches on the top and two touches on the bottom. This is a channel's formation, a channel formation. And if it does break to the downside, it would look extremely bearish all of a sudden again. And the level for that on the black bottom band is around 960. So we're going to see whether it gets there or not. A little bit more short term on the four hourly chart, we may see a reversal very soon. It's basically testing the blue. The blue top band wasn't tested just yet, but it's testing the internals. So if that blue top band gets tested, which is at 1,040, this is spot chart, by the way, around 1,040, if, it see, if we see a reversal, then it could come all the way to 975. And then we will see maybe another big rally starting if it turns into a bull flag. Um, this is how I see platinum at the moment. Again, I'm not saying it is going to get to 975, but if it reverses here, that would be the target to get to 970, 975, as long as the blue downtrend holds. So if it does reverse at 1,040 and comes down, it that would be the obvious target. Um, however, if it comes down and then breaks it to the upside, then all of a sudden it becomes bullish again. Okay, so it is kind of an if it does this, I'm going to do that. That sort of thing. I'm. Am I overrunning my time? I don't know. Is it? I think. I think it's. Uh, I think it's fine, Barak. You can keep. Uh... Shall I continue. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, and let's have a look at the uranium miners. So one of my favorites is UEC. The red downtrend was broken. Okay, that was in 2000, at the end of 2020. And you can see how it rallied after this downtrend was broken. It's like a textbook downtrend was broken. We, we got from one, around 110, all the way to six within a couple of, well, over maybe one year, over one year, one year time. And then now we have the golden uptrend that is now holding, yeah, that golden top band, the bottom band. And I was actually hoping that it would hold together with the green support. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I use trading view for, for the stocks, it's much better. So that green support you can see here, that it was a double support together with the golden and green, and that level I shared with my members at 220, 230. And I said, this is where, where the golden channel gets, gets, gets confirmed, but also we have the double support here with the green. What it has to do now, and I hope it will, it is going to break this blue support that has been broken. So it, if it holds as resistance, we may still see some pullback. Eventually, if it breaks it, then the green top band is going to be broken too. And it's going to get to the very green top band. And that would be a bull flag formation, I think, eventually. So I'm going to do it a little bit like this. So there is some serious resistance here, obviously. And then I think if it gets to that green top band, pull back, and then a break to the upside, that would be a massive bull flag formation. And the target would be 14, 17, which is the golden top band, long term. Okay, uh, I'm talking, let's talk about URG. Um, that green support held at the end of the COVID crash. It shot up from there, rallied, and then finally it broke that golden resistance zone, back tested it here, and it back tested it here too. So just recently it started to run again, 
and we obviously have to break i mean it's not only the golden you can see that red support was perfect as well that red support here there and there so that's like a triple double support and we have to break this red resistance obviously first then the green one which already has three touches so i believe we're going to get to that level at around 130 maybe just one more slight pullback and then a break to the upside i'm expecting a major run from all these uranium miners now from here nice. and let's have a look at cameco it's already doing the thing doing its thing right so cameco when it broke out of the golden huge downtrend right there yeah two touches there this is the covid crash the top band massive rally got all the way to the golden top band came down rallied back tested a little bit deep back test here but it's still held and now it's breaking out of this triangle and that is as bullish as it gets really because it didn't even touch the red bottom band i mean it, i was hoping that it would touch that red and then rally so that i could be a little bit more sure about the uptrend but i don't mind it's really breaking out and uh, i think new highs are coming from kamiko that's it really on nice. three major, on these three major uranium miners yeah, I'm, I'm uh, you're bullish on uranium, so that's, that that uh, makes me smile because that's uh, yes. my favorite sector. So as you know, so I, I have so many uranium investments, and I've been waiting for a long time. My timing was not very good, I must admit. I mean, if we look at Eura, that's the that, that's the last one. Mm. Okay, so I started buying here actually but then the covid crash came so it went sideways for a long time so i was waiting on my hand i must admit so i was a bit too early for the uranium um do we have i think we had a channel here oh, but yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm not going into that one so what happens here is now this giant triangle is breaking you can see three touches this is the fourth one i mean this is as good as it gets for a formation really a structure that is breaking to the upside the consolidation is almost over right this consolidation is almost over and we are basically breaking to new highs i believe in the coming weeks months years that is like a freight train basically departing so mm -hmm. i'm very bullish on uranium amazing yeah me too me too i mm -hmm. uh, i had my entry late 2020 so um i was quite happy with that one I was in the trade 2019, but then I uh, I left for some reasons I don't know, I can't yeah. remember. But uh, but but yeah, uranium is is one of my favorites, and uh, I have high hopes for that one. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, it's like for me, it's like a retirement thing. <laughs> it's yeah. like I've been holding it for so long. I'm gonna keep on holding. I'm not selling until they they all hit some very strong resistance levels. Mm. I'm not selling them. No, me neither. I, I've held everything. I, I've held everything that I have bought basically <laughs> since 2020. So. So that's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I could watch this all day. You know, some people watch sports, but uh, this this for me just uh, gets me going, man. I, I love it. I really do. Good, thank, thank you. you this very is much, also like this is chart porn, right? Yeah, it we is. It is. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally agree. It's yeah. uh, it, it gets me going. I, I love it. I really do. Yeah. Okay, Barak, this was absolutely amazing, and uh, and yeah, hopefully we can do this in like a month or two or three or half a year, whatever, when you, when we yeah. find the time. Because yeah. to me, it's uh, I enjoy it. I really do. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Uh, I hope everyone the best. And you, thank you very much for inviting me. And we'll be in touch, of course. We are yeah. on Twitter and we'll share charts. We'll share our ideas. And that's it, really. I mean, that's what I'm there for. Yeah, sounds absolutely absolutely amazing, Burak. As you know, you can find him on Twitter, uh, tradingchannels.uk. Uh, and yeah, have a have a great evening, everyone. And, uh, and follow work on twitter uh, you won't be disappointed have an awesome day guys and uh, thank you yeah bye, bye guys. guys bye bye